What's up, everyone? It's Mitch from the Two Guys in the Dark podcast, and I am joined by Bobby, the only guy I know who thinks about chili dogs while he's hanging out at your mom's house. You damn right. And speaking of things I like to do on Sundays, nothing beats a brand new episode of Two Guys in the Dark. Oh, tell me more, Daddy. We sit down, discuss life, pop culture, entertainment, and much, much more. So join us weekly as we take to the open road with a turkey burger and some cabbage rolls, right here on the Two Guys in a Dark podcast. What's going on, Salty Hippo Nation? It's your boy, the head advocate of the Big Titty Committee of 69 Whiskey. Did somebody, somebody say titties? titties? And the undercover brother of the Bro Migos podcast, Matt here. And it's time for my boys, B-Word and the Hater, to help you get sanitized. This is the Bleach Brothers Podcast. <laughs> Welcome into the Bleach Brothers Podcast. This is B-Word, and as usual, I am here with my good buddy, Jake. Jake, you uh, you, 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 don't, you can't catch a break, man. I'm you, sick you, again. This is your I'm third time. Third I'm time with this. the vid, bro. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of life, and I'm sick, and like I sound like I sound like, like um, if a transsexual Thai hooker had a tuba in their nose butt and throat and you could also put something in all three of those two so what you're saying is is that like anybody else with covid you just want it in all the holes just to feel better yes all the holes poke me give it to me biden daddy like i just i want it all over with i'm gonna be what is it what is um what's what's that guy the the guy the bald guy who's like an asshole who got arrested for uh, the pizza thing um we did the the episode on um oh, know, masculinity that's, that's the, the the douchebag uh what's his yes, name the um, douchebag i can't oh remember God. now i, I was yeah, watching I a video of him talking about lady boys thai lady boys the other day thai lady and i was boys. so intrigued yeah. about this whole lady boy culture that i found that fell down a rabbit hole i do that a lot i do that a lot lately b word i don't know about you i love youtube i like listening to podcasts i like learning weird shit and then sending you inappropriate stuff through the day along with all of our bros like the dads on day cool and stuff but like you brought on a friend. Who, I did. Who you introduced us in the sense of like we just met in the green room that him and I share a lot of similarities in the sense of stories. So I'm very excited to have this guy talk so everybody doesn't have to listen to my plugged up <laughs> ass. And we're going to let him plug his shit. But I'll let you bring in your buddy. Yeah, we don't want your tuba going off in this episode because, uh, you know, there's enough gayness around the Bleach Bros that we don't need any more of that. So Walt from the B-Rob podcast. How are you doing tonight, my man? What's up, fellas? Thanks for having me. And uh, Jake, usually I pay extra for the tuba. So if you're giving that out, what what other instrument would you not pay extra for? Because I might downgrade to a clarinet if you want it for free. Oh, oh, my wife plays clarinet. We're just going to leave that wide open for you guys to uh, (laughs) take that wherever you need it. Don't leave your wife wide open. I'm saying I'm sorry. I said it. (laughs) I usually do after uh, hey two pumps and a tug, dude, and then she's wide open. But so. (laughs) <laughs> two pumps and a tug <laughs> that's usually it man that's, that's usually it. it so walt i had the privilege to uh to be on your podcast recently and uh i'm going to be back on here in the here in the near future we're going to finish up a back to back and uh, have that released on your podcast but you were also on my separate podcast which is unfiltered discussions podcast we just had a blast while you were on there man talking a little bit about life and you know a little bit about your history and stuff and while we're not going to get too in depth into that within this episode people can go follow unfiltered discussions and listen to a little bit more about you but man as soon as we as soon as we connected and of course we got together again i thought man we need to get you on the bleach bros we need to have some laughs have some have some good talks have some you know conspiracy theories which we're going to talk a little bit about tonight so real quick before we get into the whole gamut of things tonight t- tell us a little bit about b raw where can we find you uh, all the things associated with that Thanks, man. Uh, the best place to find me is my website, brawpodcast.com. Shows you everywhere you, to listen, subscribe, blogs, merch, everything you need to know about the show. So that's the best place to go. Um, how I got into it is I love public speaking. I was did a ton of it when I had my own business. But it was with public speaking as an entrepreneur, you're, you're in a glass case, right? You have to yep. go up there and everybody's there. 
want to talk about entrepreneur and how you built a business. I need the secret sauce. Well, it's fucking hard work if anybody hasn't figured that out yet. And I just, I, I got off the stage and I was like, something's missing. Something's missing. And my wife took me to a story slam one night. And if you don't know what that is, you get up in front of a crowd for five minutes and you tell a, a true story. And then they rate you at the end of the night. And they're a lot, they're a lot of fun. They're entertaining. It's a good way to network. And, and um, I didn't know I was going to tell a story. We get to the story slam and I was like, oh, I like this stuff. And the lady called my wife and I said, oh, cool. You're going to, you're going to tell a story. And she's like, no, that's your surprise. And that was back when I was drinking. I was like, fuck, hold my beer. I got this. And got up <laughs> and uh, told a story about a rodeo. I used to, I did some stuff in a rodeo one time and uh it's called wild cow milking where you you and like five of your buddies try to milk a wild cow in the middle of the arena so that was a good story people out of 13 people I was the only one with a standing ovation and I was like that's what it is it's about telling stories and being real and just letting everything hang out and and connecting through that so I started a podcast called Walt's Kitchen Table and that's how it got started um, and then I was missing a lot. Cause as you guys know, as podcasters, you get done at the end of the episode, you stop recording and you bullshit for another half an hour. And people were telling me stories after that. And there were, and there were incredible stories. Like the one guy, he got in an accident and it took him five tries to get the catheter in, in him in the ambulance because the ambulance was bouncing around and blood and everything was all over the place. So I was like, why don't you fucking say that? He's like, it didn't feel like it fit, fit your format. So I went and and I did some research and I, I went with the Raw podcast for a minute. I got a couple cease and desist letters from people with the same name. I get it. But it turned out well because I like B-Raw because B is an adjective, right? And it's like, and I'm working on bringing that into fruition with it being a project, not just a podcast. So, or like with me, when I think of the three B's, I think of honey, right? B word. Uh, yeah. Before, before he continues, it was Andrew Tate. Uh, before our, our listener Ben hates on us for not saying who the asshole douchebag was, it's Andrew Tate. But I do want to ask you this, uh, Walt. How do you spell B Raw podcast for the listeners? Because I tried to find it, and the first one came up with Black Real Ass Women, the oh, podcast uh, in San Antonio, Texas. And I went, I don't think this is the right That's show. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's B, B E space r a w podcast uh that, that jake helps is not me known for spelling yeah, yeah jake is not known spell. for spelling dude i can't spell the word cat so i'm right there with you you could spell the word b though that's important that's it well. b so yeah but uh no i we had we had a whole bunch of uh good conversations that i'm excited to to kind of air some of these out on your podcast and of course bring you in here i know we're gonna have some some fun tonight yeah. um but yeah i do suggest that for anybody who likes our content for anybody who likes some of that brash, uh, just real talk, just, you know, having a good time, uh, just buddies getting together kind of thing. Uh, go follow B raw, man. He's the last episode that I heard of you. I haven't listened to your most recent one where it was just you, but, um, the last one that I heard was the, the gambling guy, oh. the, uh, the card shark, whatever his name was. Yeah. And that was, and that was a, that was a badass episode. I Dude. listened to the whole thing, man. And I'm sure as we get into it tonight, Jake will probably show his degenerate side to you and you guys can uh, find a little <laughs> commonality on that. So, uh, especially with it being football season, college football's going on. Jake's Jake's throwing money everywhere right now. So not week two, you never bet week two. Not week two because that's that's the overhyped week. So I took a break because I don't like losing. Oh, uh, makes sense. What, what what about you, Walt? You you bet on week two? Mm -mm. All right. No, no, no. Oh. I don't bet on football. I used to, and then oh, so Jake, I got a I got a great story for you. I'm a Giants fan, New York Giants okay. fan. Yeah, that's yeah. And um, it builds character. And I'm a oh, wait, are you before you continue? I'm a are you one of those? No, 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 oh, no, no, no. Stop. Are you a Cowboys fan? Forty, 40 to nothing. Oh, Cowboys God. whoop that this. ass. I That's all I have to say. Well, just tell and, him and, shut and, and just, I wish you know, I could be in control of the mic. Just, just so you up. know, Jake also used to be a Redskins fan. Mm -hmm. So we've gone back and forth for years. Thank God, boys. Thank God none of us are Eagles fans because fuck the Eagles. Oh, right? Well, no, I agree with you on that. Yep, I agree. But, Walt, are, do you say the New York football giants? Fuck, like those, get the like, fuck. Just the giants. That's it. 
Thank you. you. Okay, thank you. This is my favorite Giants fan I've ever met. I'm a fan of the New York football Giants. Get the fuck out of here. It's called the Giants, right? So I I get married in 08, 08, I think. Yeah, 08. Don't forget that. No, my first wife, so fuck that. But, okay. All right. Well, fuck, uh, fuck that see, marriage, thing. marriage, it. marriage is like pancakes, fellas. You always fuck up the first one, right? That's true. <laughs> so. And the first one's normally a little dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. But so I'm in Vegas because I'm a degenerate gambler, and I put a hundred dollars on the. This is in June. Uh, for the season coming up, I put a hundred dollars on the Giants to win the Super Bowl, and I give my dad a ticket for the same thing, twenty-eight to one. It's the first time they beat uh, the Patriots. Tom Brady. So 2800 bucks, right? I was like, fuck, that's pretty nice. So every year after that, I was doing it, $100. I'd give my dad a ticket, and I'd take one, you know, of course. Now the next time they beat the Patriots, it was 44 to 1. And this back in my drinking and drugging days. Two weeks before the Super Bowl, I'm in Vegas. I go make a bunch of prop bets. So I take all the cash out of my pockets, and I split it in three piles. I have no idea at the time how much it was. I slide the first pile over to the lady. I go, put that on uh, 1279. Put this one on uh, 924. And put this one on 562. You know, I just I didn't even read. I just looked at the numbers. Dude, do you guys remember that Super Bowl? Do you? Oh, Jake? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My biggest ticket, it was 75 to one was for the giants to do a two point conversion in the first quarter. Oh shit. Yeah. Like the second, com- like the second, um, possession, they scored a fucking safety. I was like, ah! so I, with my other prop bets, I ended up winning about 12 grand on that Super Bowl. It's a nice night. Yeah, that was a fun yeah, night. I, I'm happy they finally opened the Indian casino down the road for me, so I don't have to call B word to go place bets for me because it's illegal <laughs> here. Uh, I can't do it, so I'd be calling him and going, "I need you to put this and this." And he doesn't gamble at all, so it's always like archaic to him, where it's like I can't spell, but I'm like teaching, like you need to do this, this. And B word's like, "Okay, I got it." And then I remember I won uh, the Rams Super Bowl where I picked Cooper Cup. I kept saying yep. it that he was going to be MVP. I got really good odds on it. I got seven to one. And then at the end, B-Work goes, why didn't you just throw all your money at that? I was like, I spread it out just in case to cover because I covered everything. I covered my bets. The one that pissed me off that game is I had, and I can't remember who the, the, the cornerback or safety was, but to get an interception and that very first play that was dropped, that was supposed to be an interception would have paid me 2,800 bucks right there. And I was so fucking pissed, but you know, it happens. That's gambling. Yeah. What's your game of choice, dude? Hockey. I'm a big hockey guy. Nice. Um, I bet I bet a lot of hockey. Um, I do a lot of like first period lines usually. Um, the only one that killed me this year is when o- Ovi Ovechkin was going for the record for most goals. I remember my brother's a huge Capitals fan. And I kept calling him, going, "I'm going to bet on Ovi to score because they want him to get the record, so they keep like feeding him, p- giving yeah, him the sure. puck to score." So every day I'm going down this, you know, throwing hundred dollars down for him to be the first score, which is going to pay anywhere from eight hundred to three hundred bucks, right? So I'm like, okay. So I threw it down, loses, threw it down, loses. I'm, I'm in one game. I threw 300 down, lost it all, right? So I won't even make money back. I do this for like four days in a row. And I finally call my brother, you know, I'm fucking done with this bet. I'm never going to win. And he goes, I get bet you tonight's the night it happens. The night I didn't drive down there and throw it down because I was pissed is the night it happened. And that's, oh, you know, yeah, how it goes. that's part of it. But hockey, uh, table tennis is my other one. Oh, Not that's a, a lot of fun. No, I got a coworker. Oh, I that love bets. betting table tennis. Mm-hmm. I got a coworker that just is it's obsessed with that. Betting the lines it. move so fast. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. make you can make so much and lose so much really quick. Yeah. But it's like it's 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 fun to watch too. And the nice thing is DraftKings because when I'm in Oregon, I'm allowed to do it. Um, they play it live on there too, so you can watch oh. the game and watch the momentum and bet back and forth. And it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Did I? T- I used to play a lot of hockey. I was on a traveling hockey team. And B word. Did did I tell that story on your? No. no. Oh, dude. No. So we're up in Minnesota. Light us up, man. Minnesota. So we're in a track. We're coming up there to play in a, ho- in a hockey tournament. We get now imagine at the time there's like eight, nine of us all rolling up to this hotel. And I asked the concierge type person. I said, man, is there a fucking peeler bar around here? You know? And he's like, yeah, go down here. Go down here. Gives us directions. So here we are all wrapped up and it's in the middle of winter. You know, it's Minnesota. We're all wrapped up. We go to this 
the peeler bar. We walk in, dead empty. And the guy goes, "Got to you know, got to pay the entry, and it's two drink minimum." I'm like, "Okay." So we walk in, not a fucking soul in there, empty. I'm like, what the hell? And the bartender's like, "Dude, you guys just got to hang tight. Just wait." So we get up next to the stage and we're just drinking and the music's playing. It's kind of lit up. It's not like dark, like a normal peeler bar would be. Right. And next thing you know, packed, fuck it. Ass to nut dude, just packed with people. And I'm like, Oh shit, something's going on. Lights go down, special occasion, blah, 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 blah. They make a big deal out of it. Dude. Out, cut out, come dancing. 12 little midget strippers yes yes oh my god what entry song do they have i please hope it's the lollipop guild or some bullshit it was like it was it was, cir- it was circus music yeah. yeah it was a circus music so i was like oh my god so they were they were, you know their legs aren't very long so the, to give them to give you a lap dance they had a little box next to your your uh chair and they would just sit and dance on the box next to you and like rub your shoulders and reach over and Dude, it was just fucking insane. And then the end of the night, of course, pour some sugar on me. He was playing and all that shit. So then they play the circus music again, and they all pile on the the bar. But they pile on it, and it looks like a big shish kebab. So they fucking go sideways on the bar, and they they scoot up. Next one, next one, next one. So there's 12 of them fucking stacked on the bar. It was amazing. And then pop, pop. Pop, they all start popping off with the music. Yeah, that was a good night, dude. That sounds like an amazing night, man. Yeah, I've amazing always had night. a dream to bang a midget. Just, just all right. You know how everybody has a bucket list. I have a bucket list too. Well, oh, of course, you do. I mean, so like, what's something on your bucket list that's never happened that you would you always wish would? Well, outside of like the celebrity type, okay, thing. Uh, ooh, never thought of a midget. Wow, oh, I have. I have. He imagine, a lot. That's Beaver my dream. to me all the time. Imagine, Beaver, that, that, imagine how big That it, made him sign up OnlyFans. Imagine how big your cock would look in that little... Is that what it's about? I signed up OnlyFans <laughs> one <laughs> time just to, just to try to see something about this midget lady that was on there. And there was nothing on there. And I was like, well, that's stupid. I lost my 10 bucks. Canceled that uh, shit. But yeah, and then I, I sent him the you. nude the next day for free. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> I scoured <laughs> the internet. <laughs> so, Jake, what, who's on your fucking list? Um, Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell is on my. All right, and I'm telling you why because I had a quote on this show, and fans love it that she is the Tesla truck of a one night stand. I just got to know how it drives. I have to know. Mm. Like she is somebody that I want to know what's going on down there, how it's going to happen, if she's going to pick pick me up, or I'm going to pick her up, or anything. See that? See what the first thing that pops in my mind about Rosie O'Donnell is that gravelly voice trying to act sexy to you while she jerks you off. That would who's, be whose gravelly voice would you rather have while jerking you off? Miley Cyrus's or her? The adventure is part of the journey. <laughs> Miley, Miley Cyrus. <laughs> hey, one of my conspiracy. <laughs> hey, dude, I got it. I've always had this crazy conspiracy theory about Miley Cyrus. You know that one? What's that? No. That Disney fucking knocked her off back in the day and she's been a it's been a clone. a clone. Hmm? See, I her, think that that's like a legit thing with people, though. I think that there are clones out there. Her name's Melissa. It was her stunt double. And she mm-hmm. wanted a she wanted like a childhood, and of course she's a gravy train for Disney, and they're like, no, you ain't going nowhere. I'm I don't know if I really believe in the clone thing. Like, well, no, a she's lot not of conspiracy theories. I'll get with, but no, I know she's not a clone. I know right, she's right, like the yeah. stunt double look alike. Right, just like uh, at New York Fashion Week this week, they had a a Kanye look alike wearing a shirt that said "Jew Lives Matter." I don't know if you guys saw that, nah, and no. it, it finally came out that he's not the clone that everybody thinks he is. He's just a look alike that mm. Hollywood keeps putting him in places to fuck with people. Eh, um. Well. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I. I don't know. Because like, what? There's the other one that Eminem's a clone. Yeah, and that's like a big everybody. One. Everybody is now like like who who's not. I mean, the only one. Um, there was a, it was a magician that they were saying was, and I don't know if it was David Blaine or or, or uh, uh, Copperfield, Chris Angel, wasn't it Copperfield or Copperfield? It was one of them that everybody always said there was a clone, and I. I and then you watch that movie, um, uh, with Christian Bale, and you sort of think of it like, okay, is it real or not? But. That's a good yeah, I don't movie. know. I, I'm not. I'm not down the the clone or the stunt double route. I, I I do see it. The only other one is Andrew W K. So I'll give you that. I don't know if you know that conspiracy no. theory. No, because you remember WK? Andrew W K. 
you remember him like in the like 2003 and stuff like if we're gonna party gonna party hard that song and it was like the summer song like a party song he looks like he belongs in Foo Fighters he was a big rocker he like blew up and it was just like bullshit music like the song party hard tonight we're gonna rock stuff like that and the whole rumor was that he hated the music industry in Hollywood that they got rid of him and they got somebody else that looks exactly like him or sounds like him or anything and then and replaced him because they didn't want to deal with his his like antics of going against like the, you know the man or whatever. Yeah, sure. So that, that's mm-hmm. another big one. Yeah, I see. I see that being the thread of a lot of the music industry and the acting that where they go against. They're like super talented at first. And then they go against the grain and then the industry or the man just gets rid of them and they put somebody else in their place. It kind of looks like them. And then that all, all that shit starts about a clone or a double or and all that good stuff. Well, there's only three things that are going to kill you in Hollywood. And it's either uh, uh, um, Pete Holmes, Dick or the Kardashians. So that's vice versa, depending on your poison. Yeah. Uh, doing something like Louis C.K. and getting caught. You know, that power uh, me too. Movement, yeah, but see. Or, or just hating the man. Well, hating the man's probably going to be the, you know right up there with the Kardashians, but now Louis CK, see, I have an issue with that where, okay. So if you ask somebody like Louis CK or he asked you, Hey, let's go upstairs to my hotel room or whatever. What do you think you're going to do? You think he's going to get, yeah. You think he's going to give you fucking pointers and like have a conversation? No, you're a good looking woman that he's asking you to go upstairs with. And then he jerks off in front of you and never, and then he, then you leave. And for the last 15 years, you've been joking about it with your girlfriends at parties. And all of a sudden it's a problem. I have a hard time with the whole Louis CK thing. Um, but when it does come into cancel culture, like obviously I think all of us can kind of agree that cancel culture is just a little too much, but you know, when it comes to the whole Hollywood machine or the, or, you know, just that type of stuff, you know, you look at artists that were so popular, that all of a sudden say something that might be a tad controversial. I'd say it's probably more provocative than it is controversial. You know, like like Post Malone as an example. Like he he moved to Utah and like he bought you know stock in whatever chicken companies over there and like he doesn't want to do anything with them anymore. And all of a sudden like he's disconnected and now there's all these rumors that he's doing drugs and like that that kind of builds up that whole facade, right? Like there's it's it's more like a rumor mill about people that are going against it and then who believes it right or joe rogan joe rogan was a part of hollywood society for a long time and all of a sudden he says i don't like what's going on here in la i'm gonna move he moves and he's and he goes to literally the most liberal part of texas that you can get to like the dude that it's not like the dude went to like el paso right the dude went to the most liberal part of texas that you can go to he's investing in the community he's doing good things over there and all of a sudden now he's like some right-wing conspiracy theorist and i'm like how do you how do you tie these two together man like so i i agree going against the man is is one thing but there was that hot chick recently out of dfw speaking of texas uh i'm trying to remember her name go gomez uh tiffany gomez Gomez, your your fake plane oh my god she is so hot she is Is that the lady that was like that dude's not real yes that motherfucker back there that is not real it's a lizard it's a lizard i have no idea anything about that except that little 15 second clip i saw somebody like sitting in their seat that's all i needed walt that's that's all oh is that does that end up in the bank dude she's that's that hot dude yep and uh, so, so, but here's the <laughs> thing. Mm-hmm. Do you think she saw something on the plane or did she do this for publicity? Like publicity, because- dude, everybody's going, that's the conspiracy. Everybody's going for that 15 minutes of fame right now. Everybody's yep. like the guy, I don't know, New York fashion week. Did you see the guy with the trash bag that just walked out there? How that's are we amazing. back like, on sort of New York fashion week? What the fuck are you <laughs> Because it's been popping up on the news today, all day on Instagram. <laughs> this guy put a shower cap on a trash bag over himself and walked down and nobody knew it. Everybody was clapping, thinking that he was an actual model until they tackled him. It was fucking great. Oh, because one, he wanted to make a mockery. He wanted to make a mockery of like fashion, right? Yeah. Because we all, we all make fun of it. Like what's actually out there. They're putting bubbles on people's feet and shit. But two, so many people now are doing things for that 15 minutes to go, okay, I'll go viral if I do something weird, crazy, or whatever. And then they get big, 
And then now she like now she is permitted back into the airport. TMZ followed her like, well, what do you want to say? Oh, I'll never talk about it. Yeah, you won't talk about it because nothing fucking happened. You're just an annoying dumb cunt that was on fucking Snapchat or whatever you want to call it. And you just wanted to become famous because you weren't you weren't a celebrity. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know, I want to apologize that I was a little crazy. Yeah, bitch. You were yelling about a lizard person on the back of the fucking plane. Shut the fuck up. So, you know, that classic mathematical situation or uh, equation the crazier, the crazier they are, the better the oh, sex. Yeah, the crazy the, hot matrix. Yeah, crazy right, hot right, matrix. Yeah, yeah, there you go. B word, man. The sex with her must be just fucking off the Dude, rails. <laughs> I, I would, I would let her slit my throat. Like I'm just gonna be flat honest with you. Like she can take it as far as she wants. Shove so things no, in my ass. I don't care. No safe like, word. I, no, like the safe <laughs> word's some like forty-two letter German hyperbole. Like I don't even know what it is or how to even. Pronounce it. Yeah, something like that. And I'm just like, whatever. Well, like, let's just go. Like, there's no tapping out. There's only passing out. Like, let's do this. <laughs> My safe word is don't stop. <laughs> My safe word is no. <laughs> Mine with my wife is cactus. Cactus? I don't like. I, here's why. I have it. Yes. Well, remember my my our word for if we're gonna fuck is laundry soap. Remember? I remember that. Yeah. Oh, is that so, the cue? Like, hey, laundry soap. No. Yeah. If I get a text like, hey, I need laundry detergent. I'm like, oh, okay. Going. I'm coming. I'm so, coming early today. Your your comparative is laundry that. detergent. No, it's there's an inside joke, <laughs> oh, but it's okay. uh, one. We got that. We got that. Uh, you ever heard of that? The 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 adventure date book or whatever. Mm-mm. So we got the adventure date book in bed where you like scratch off things and it tells you to do things. Oh, okay, fun, sure, like, sure. We do that. So we had to write a safe word down, and this is this is really how my brain thought. Okay, guys, I went. What would be the worst thing to ever go in my asshole? And I went a cactus, <laughs> and I went that. Is, is the type of safe word I need because whatever would go in there and scare me so bad that I would never want it to happen sexually, like that's my word. So I picked cactus. My wife has no idea why I picked cactus. She goes, that's fucking weird. What are you thinking? Because you're from Arizona or whatever. I'm just like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I never want to say this so, word because if I do, that means a cactus is going near my asshole, guys. So Tonka truck, Hot Wheels, that's not. I don't want something too too much too like like I'm a mumble talker at times and so that's not like or if or if she like cactus is very easy to be like but not like it doesn't it's not talk come truck, across talk truck. yeah no I I sound like Mater and she thinks I'm playing like a Disney fucking thing because the other thing I do well just so you know is I do uh, impressions and I practice them on my wife while we're having sex randomly. So like she hates it when I do Gilbert Godfrey when I'm about to come. That's beautiful. And she uh, and I, I call our buddy Gnome and tell him I practice him on him all the time. And like I'll, and he was like, oh, my God. I, and my wife hates it. But it just it randomly will pop up. I am a fan of that. I'm going to try that. I'll let you know how that goes. Who, who are you impersonating? <laughs> Me? Hulk Hogan. How's that? Yeah, yeah brother. So- yeah. Your wife is going to hate being called brother while you're pounding. I'm just going to let you know that right now. It doesn't work. Like, macho man's a better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Queen. Yeah. That's it. That's the spot. I can see B word with the fucking airport, air, air, airplane lady doing like the ultimate wear to shake him on the ropes. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100% wearing the little dunt duns and everything. Oh, but, uh, dude. But let's let's take a real quick break, boys, and uh, get some composure in this because I feel like this is going to go off the rails, which I'm all about. But uh, let's make some money. I'll be right back. Hey, guys, this is B-Word here at the Bleach Brothers Podcast. Just a friendly reminder that we are sponsored by Jerky Pro. And if you are a fan of jerky, make sure to go to www.jerky.pro. Use code BleachBros5 at checkout to get yourself a little bit of a discount. Both Jake and I are huge fans of jerky. And Jake working in the beef industry and me being just a fellow fat kid, we absolutely swear by Jerky Pro. You will not miss out by ordering Jerky Pro. Do not let some of the sticker shock shock you. There are free shipping options, multiple flavors, etc. so forth. If you do order Jerky Pro, make sure to use code BLEACHBROS5 at checkout. Download, subscribe, and listen to Whiskey Hill Podcast. We're the new show that doesn't hold back on today's ridiculousness. We're not on the right, we're not on the left. We call it the way we see it, and we're going to make you laugh while doing it. Throw in some great craft beer, and you cannot lose. Download Whiskey Hell Podcasts anywhere you enjoy listening and check out whiskeyhellpod.com for more. 
Welcome back into the Bleach Brothers podcast. Good story time. Some of my favorite types of episodes. No fucking run da- rundown written. Just talking, having a good time, talking about penis, vagine, whatever else we want to talk about. B-words, dumb taste in women. But well, I, it, it comes to my understanding. I know we, we already mentioned it in the beginning of the episode, but you're into conspiracy theories. And we, we broke down one a bit, but like, what's one out there right now that's probably your favorite? All right. We'll just dive deep into it. I'll run it down through you. Is there one part the first part of it is there will not be an election in 2024 and if there is by the time we get to the election Kamala Harrison will be the president and the only way to replace a woman president is with another woman president so if we're not a communist country by 2024 by the end of 2028 we will be a communist country Okay, I, I mean, I'm, I'm following you on that. Now, when you replace a female president with a female, can it be a male that became a female? Because you know, like Donald Trump's just tucking in and running. Would it, say that again. Like when you said we're, the only way we're ever going to replace a, 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 a woman president, correct? Mm-hmm. Could it be a man that's a woman, you know, or whatever? Yeah, like sure, now? sure. Okay, that probably that probably gain you a ton of points too, right? Uh, as we're talking Donald Trump, that probably, he'd probably lose a ton of points because he's, his followers probably, you know, they, most of them think of him as a tough guy, right? So if he went in that direction, he'd probably lose a lot of his fan base, but because you know, Kamala Harrison can't, she, she can't spell the word cat, let alone run a country. I mean, uncle Joe is not doing a very good job to begin with, and he's just a front man. So why not put her up there? And then Michelle Obama would be, a a front person as well. I'm going to hop on this train with you, Walt. And I, 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 the reason why I'm going to hop on this is because I, I look at the political landscape and Jake and I don't really talk a whole lot of politics on this show. So I'll just keep it like 20, 20,000 foot level here. But, but basically I don't see that Joe is going to run again. And I would say from a popularity aspect, Obama still has a lot of popularity just in general. And his wife has a lot of popularity. I would see that she'd be a front runner instantly. Mm-hmm. But I live on the West Coast, so I'm going to kind of spoil this for you. I think that it's Gavin Newsom. I think Gavin Newsom is the new poster boy of the Democrat side, just based off of what I see over here because we border a state with him. I can see the communist thing just because I think everybody's sick of the two party system of what we yeah. have. And I'm not yeah. saying I agree with it. I'm just saying I think people are so sick of politics and the. Well, it's all one. It's all one fighting. party anyway. Really? Right. And that's my thing is that it's it's I could I could see that happening. My um my favorite conspiracy, to, especially to argue against people, because I like going on Reddit and, you know, getting banned <laughs> from uh, the Golden Knights and stuff. But fuck that team forever Um, is Flat Earthers. Oh, I that's ama- oh. love everything that they try to say and do. And when they prove themselves wrong and like film a little video and put it on, it's like those are the people too that I'm like, are you really like watching this and editing it? Like, do you? It's just it's it's amazing and baffling to me. Now here's the here's the problem I have though, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit this. I don't believe that the Earth is flat, and people can believe that if they want and just whatever. But there is that part of me that'd be like, it would be fucking awesome though. It would be so cool if something like that came out true and you're like, well, fuck, like there it is like that every, you know, like it's one of those like there are, I, I like conspiracy theories because I, I dream that they're real. Like I dream Bigfoot's real. Like, is he real? Probably not. But it'd be awesome if he was. It was and Kamala Harris's him, mom walking around. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Tucked in. On, the, on that note, I want to I want to combine with you guys. OK, so. This whole alien stuff, this whole UFO stuff that's coming out now. Okay, now I I don't dispute that there was some sort of flying something in the air that, you know, the Navy saw, the Air Force saw, whatever else, right? But why are they dropping it now? And this is where my, my conspiracy is. Because for the government to have Senate and Congress hearings on all of this sort of stuff and report it out to the news and let some of this stuff be public, why are they doing it now? I feel like we live in a society that loves to distract and we're coming up on a political election. And just like Jake said, whether they're real or they're not totally fine. I the t- today or yesterday or whatever day it was, they came out with those aliens in Mexico that looked as dry as the, uh, you know, eating a Popeye's biscuit without a drink. 
Like they were just tough, right? I don't know if those were real. I have no clue if those were real. They don't look real. It, it looks fake. But why is all this stuff coming out now? So, Walt, on your end of things, I think that there's this big political distraction that's happening. And I feel like we, as constituents of this country, are so far in the weeds on things that we shouldn't be involved in, just all of that sort of stuff, that is distracting us from the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is the entirety of the corruption of the government Mm -hmm. that has to do with the right wing and the left wing being part of the same bird. And that's the thing that I think is is like the biggest conspiracy that's out there, whether it's UFOs, whether it's whatever, whether it's the hot chick on a plane saying that motherfucker is not real and I'm over here tugging. All of that is a conspiracy to me. No, yeah, 100 percent. It's distraction, classic stuff, right? Even back in the uh, knights and kings and horses and all that shit they did that as well it's just distraction so we can get over here it's like with the covid bill they said we're going to put this COVID bill but if you look through it there's all that other money that everybody else got and it's just distraction Mm going to dangle it up here i want to back up just a little bit because it'll bring it around jake you know with the flat earth one thing another conspiracy that i love is the whole antarctica thing what, yeah, it's the ice wall that doesn't exist. Or, yeah, you know, you can't go there and whatever, but go ahead. Right, because that's the end of the earth. Well, motherfucker, if it's flat, there's got to be another side to it. <laughs> yeah, it's right? that. And then, like, I love knowing if the UFOs are down there, there's pyramids or the B-50 or what is it? I don't know. I think it was like Organism 52 that Russia found, mm-hmm. that octopus that killed all those people. Like, I follow all that stuff. Like, I, I love creatures. I love UFOs. I like aliens. I wanted to clap some cheeks at Area 51s when all those kids were going to storm it like Naruto. I was all down for that. Like, I was watching the Bob Lazar documentary the other night again just because. And I, I agree with you boys at the, with the political landscape and everything, like the distraction. Because uh, it was funny, speaking of Flat Earth, Eddie Bravo was on um, Joe Rogan. And he was talking because he's a Flat Earther. He thinks space is fake and stuff. And they were trying to ask him, like, why does he think space is fake? And he came and said, because the only way you can get a whole world government is if you had a threat from out, an outside source. And that's the only way the whole world would come together. And then it was just like, oh, crap. Like, everybody in the room was making fun of him and talking. And then you're like, yeah. yeah. Now, do I think space is fake? No, fuck no. Do I think the world's flat? Fuck no. Like, none of it makes sense. And, like, you know, it's it's fun to imagine. And it's fun to, like, not necessarily argue with people. Because there's, like, a level of conspiracy people I'll argue with. And I don't know mm-hmm. if you feel the same way, mm-hmm. Walt. It's like you look at it and go, not worth it. Like flat earthers, it's just not worth it. It's like they, I'm never going to change their mind. The level of of like where we're at with it, it's not going to happen. Now, if it's somebody that deathly believes in Bigfoot, and the reason I bring that up, I live up in Bigfoot country, Sasquatch country, is like I, I remember sitting at a bar one time and this guy had a podcast about Bigfoot and like he was convinced, like he was showing me videos and like I'm watching it going, that looks like a fucking somebody's golden retriever like laying down in the woods. And, you know, but like to him, like that's the thing. Do you find there are certain conspiracies that you don't believe in or whatever that you or, or that you do believe in so wholeheartedly and you but you don't want to argue about it? No, I'm kind of an armchair court, uh, armchair conspiracy theorist. I'm with you. There's a certain level like you guys sit here and we'll bounce back and forth and have a good time and rip on each other. But like I, when somebody is hardcore with flat earth to stick with that one, what I say is to what end? Like uh, the end of the earth. What's like, Antarctica. like the last episode or I'm sorry, like the first episode <laughs> of that show dinosaurs when they're supposed to push mama on, into the tar pit. Like that's that's. That's the end of the earth they're, right there. Like, right? But I'm like, okay, so if they're trying to hide that the earth is flat, to what end? And they're like, because on the other side of the ice wall is like this paradise and only the elites go and this is that and the Illuminati and all this other stuff. And I'm like, and that's that's a little, I like getting deep, but now you're getting way deep, right? And yeah. aliens, I'll, I believe in aliens. If you think that we're the only people or only civilization or only life form in the universe, you're a fucking idiot. I mean, come on. Either that or you're what just you self-centered. Think, how do you feel about the Fermi paradox then? The what? The Fermi paradox. That's like, that's either we're the only people in the universe and there's so many equations to break it down or or there's no way that we can be the, the only people in the universe. The, I just, uh, the lot, there's just no way we can, we can only be. I mean, really? We're the only living? Look at all the strange shit that we find here on Earth. 
you know, 2,000 feet down in the water and in the ice and in the jungle, right? So you can't tell me that something that lives down under so much pressure, obviously not the sub, but things that can actually survive down there and thrive and all that in those conditions, you can't tell me that there's all these stars in the in the sky, they're all suns and they got planets floating around them. Really, there's not another planet that's just far enough away from that light source to have some kind of life form on it? Do you feel, though, like, you know how some people argue, like, with the UFOs, which is funny now that the Navy and everybody's coming out because essentially you just say, yeah, it's an unidentified flying object, like, as it was now. I don't remember what they're called now, like UT, um, U- UAPs now UAPs. or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it could be Russia or, you know, or Germany or any other country, like, flying stuff that we don't know or our own military and they're not telling about it. But, like, if if there was a spaceship, like, you know, there's some people that believe they're actually people from Earth that have time traveled back. Or the aliens live on the planet, or or it's just an outside source. What do you think is more likely? Outside source. Right? And then the, to add to that conspiracy, the Hollywood ramped up, look, what, in the late 80s and 90s, they super ramped up the movies to be Independence Day. Everything comes in and... For some reason, New York City gets destroyed in every alien movie. I don't know why that is, but to desensitize us. So if a spaceship flies over my house, I'm like, okay, that's a fucking spaceship. And there's aliens. To where if that happened 20 years ago, like uh, what's the guy's movie where the the lumberjack guy got jacked up? He got supposedly abducted and then he came back. Fire in the sky. Fire in the sky. And uh, look how he was treated and look how like Bob Lazar is treated and stuff like that. So I think they're trying to desensitize it on a more local thing. When I was in Colorado, they made pot legal. Right. And I said, that's to dis- or they made medical marijuana legal. And I tell everybody that's to desensitize you. So in five years, they're going to make that's legal. Because right now, if you just came out and said pot's legal, everybody's like, ah, it's a gateway drug. Bah, 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 bah. But, oh, yeah, they've been medical for fucking five years. Yeah, I figure it's going to be. So I think it's the same thing, but on much bigger scale. I do believe that there's some kind of life force. We can get into ancient aliens, which I'm a huge fan of. I think ancient civilizations, stuff like that. And the whole idea was that 12,000 years ago, there was an event that wiped out. Boom. Dude, Boom, I, you t- keep preaching. Dude, keep preaching. I, this, I, is, I this is my jam right here. I think that's I think that's completely viable. Right? And then this climate change bullshit. The other day a guy's like, climate's changing. I go, Yeah, it has been for the last forty five billion years, dude. It changes all the time. And see, I, I so first off, I'm a huge advocate, at least in in, in education of it for the younger Dryas impact theory. Like that's my jam right now. I love that's, that. that's what I'm learning about. That's what I'm listening to. So when you're on that, you're preaching and I love it. The one thing that I will say is I do believe that there's a distinct difference with, with um, climate change and the globe, the human globalization and the impact that it has on the earth. What I mean by that is, is that, yeah, the, the earth changes cyclically climate wise, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so, so we're on a rotation, We've got proof that there was ice ages. We've got proof that there wasn't ice ages. We've got like everything changes, right? But I do think that humans do dirty up the world in certain sure. places. Like we we pollute, we have garbage, like however many tons of plastic is just floating in the floating in the ocean. Like there's obviously some things with that that do have merit that probably do have an impact on the on the 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 health of the earth if you want to go with it that way so i'm an advocate like yeah let's take care of the rock that we're on that spins around this big old bright thing you know half a day but on the flip side like the whole global warming of it all like that's just something that i do believe is is cyclical now am i am i a climate scientist no so if somebody has proof of something else by all means call me out on that proof but I will say that younger driest impact theory, I cannot get Jake on this bus, but the younger driest impact theory is my favorite topic right now. 
And, um, you know, a lot of people call Graham Hancock a uh, conspiracy theorist, but I just see him as a journalist. Like he's he's not saying it is one thing or another thing. He's just asking Point questions. It out. And why are things like this? And then there's all these theories that go with it. But, Jake, you're looking at me like you're going to disagree. What do you got to say? All journalists are conspiracy theorists for one, but no two. I mean, like you can't. All right. People that ask what Alex Jones asked questions. You're telling me that guy. To, and, 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 the fucking frogs are gay. That guy is not a fucking like journalist, right? Dude, or if whatever. you I went down that I do. I went down that rabbit hole, dude. That makes a lot of sense. If you go down that rabbit hole for about an I'll hour and a half. I'll fall down it now. Now I'm going to. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's it's just one of those. It's not that I don't believe it. And I, I, you know me, B-Word. I don't like to give an opinion if I'm at a low level of it. So I don't mm -hmm. know enough about it as much as you do. But it's also something I've never really fallen into. Like, I used to be a huge Ancient Alien fan. I still watch it all the time. But there are so many things to me now after watching it and seeing also, like, how it just became a cash cow. And Sukalos, you know, is a, is a batshit crazy, like, bad hairdo. Um, that it just, a lot of it just doesn't add up anymore to me after after really digging into it and you know so, and so that's that's hard for me like to me it's it's like the flat earth thing it's a great dream a lot of the time but i can't always see it like when they're like how did people move these rocks i don't know people do incredible fucking things all the time like we never think we can do it because nowadays we're lazy and we like to use machine equipment as we should because it, it takes care of the job but i mean you had twelve thousand slaves they're probably going to be able to move a brick if they're getting whipped hard enough i swear to god like go back to <laughs> egypt back in time that's gonna happen so don't tell me don't tell me that they didn't have it or all of a sudden trees weren't there you know what we don't fucking know like that that's my biggest thing like because i'm a huge dinosaur fan right i'm a big dinosaur fan i love fucking dinosaurs right and when I was a kid, they were cold blooded and then they had skin and they looked like dress park. And then all of a sudden they had feathers and now they're bright and now they're birds. And now we don't know. And it's like and they're like, it looked like this. You don't know what it fucking looked like. Look at a hippopotamus's skull and then tell me, like, if you rendered that nowadays, like if we didn't know what a hippopotamus looked like. We would make that look like a gnarly fucking angry rhino. It wouldn't look like a big, salty happy b word it wouldn't it would not look like that and so things like that bother me or like on ancient aliens when they show the elephant skull and they they created cyclops to scare your kids at night that's all that is is where the trunk goes it looks like a human skull with a giant eye socket but it's an elephant skull so those types of things bother me like the dream should be alive i want to know that Mo mokela membe is in africa in the congo the dinosaur i i want it to be true but is it most likely not okay so I'm going to mix those two together because I love dinosaurs. And I agree with you. Somebody looked at that skull, made this fucked up runner. Of course, it has to be scary, right? Like it can't be fun and goofy looking. And then they made it have a sound. How the fuck do you know how that yeah. sound like? Right? Yeah. But I saw something recently that Egyptians used tamed dinosaurs to build the pyramids. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. That's like the theory that I just they saw found that in today. A South America, where they have like the all all the rocks that have uh, drawn on where people are riding dinosaurs to get placed and stuff. Yeah. But like, I actually want to make like a YouTube channel that's like just a joke, like like a parody of the History Channel of like in the future of like like because I've talked to Beward about this. Can you imagine if like Earth went extinct for a little while, right? Like all the civilizations died out, and like you know people eventually can come back and they find comic books, right? They're gonna be like, look at this Bible of this man named Superman. It must have been their god, and they drew so much stuff. Like when you have so much disconnect and so much time and not enough like of understanding of something and you find one tablet in a fucking cave and you're like that's the end all be all no it might have been some punk kid in his fucking high school egyptian class that wanted to be an asshole and wrote a paper about a fucking flying phoenix to impress some girl and go get a good grade we have no fucking clue that's it could have been raji the fucking egyptian shithead who was always in detention for all we know or it is the eye of raw and god and we're all fucking wrong that's that's the problem i has you'll never really fucking know and i've gotten no. to the point in my life where i don't care I just want to live. I want to fuck. I want to eat. I want to go to bed. Like, I don't care about anything anymore. I'm like, oh, is your flat? Great. It's flat tomorrow. Does it change my life? No. My car still sucks. Gas prices <laughs> suck. The president sucks. The fucking Golden Knights suck. It doesn't change anything. Dallas Cowboys are winning the Super Bowl. Suck on that. Oh, my God. You've been saying oh, that for 20 years. Get dick. the fuck out of here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. America's team. 40 Mike. to nothing, Walt. 40 to nothing, uh, man. Uh, just like me in my sex life, I start strong and I fucking fail halfway through. So, <laughs> Hey, yeah, dude. That's true. But that's um, true. Uh, with the <laughs> fuck, dude, you said so much right there. That was amazing. But with the theory, though, you don't 
think that there was some ancient. Oh, oh, well, there that's what, was. no, that's what I was going to tell you. So I had a guy on long time ago when I first started my show. He worked for NASA for 13 years, and he's a self-proclaimed uh, downer. He'll t- he he's a professional post-apocalyptic analysis, and that's kind of he did that shit in NASA. And he goes, by the way, everybody makes space look all fun and shit. He goes, that's a scary place. That's the last oh, place you want to yeah. go is space. But he said, because you said, okay, if everybody disappeared, he goes, what will happen is, look how fast your lawn grows. Look how fast everything grows, right? He goes, now that pumps so much carbon dioxide into the air that the earth cools down. And then you got another ice age. He goes, I'm talking crazy amount of time needs to pass. But in the blink, like, who are we, right? In human history, I heard a guy say, and it was a great analogy. If you think you've been on the world for a while and you think you have an impact, going back to what you said, you just want to make sure your fucking car starts and and just get through the day almost. He goes, take a calendar, January 1st to December 31st. That's how old the earth is. Humans been on the earth and what we know about is December 31st, 1154 p.m. and 60 or in 35 seconds. That's where we were when humans came along, and you think you fucking know everything. See, I was hoping you were going to say that we were actually in the middle of the calendar, July 4th, the best fucking day, Bald Eagle Freedom Party, 1776, (laughs) hot dogs in America, motherfuckers. See, the the amount of history that's out there, just just kind of like what both of you guys said, I think that there's so many things that we can focus on as a society. Like, if somebody came in here, like, I want to believe in aliens. Because I just think that rationally, there's probably more th- than what I'm aware of that's out there. But if they came here and they saw our pop culture and they saw the things that we worship as a society, like we're going to get our fucking ass handed to us. Oh, yeah, like, straight even... up. Like, yeah. And that's where you're talking about, you know, movies like, you know, Independence Day or or anything like that. I, I feel like if they have the technology to get here, they're going to bend us over and probe us. Until our and, lives are over. And even if. And then they're going to resurrect us. Cactus. And do it Damn it, dude. You beat me cactus. to it. I was going to say, even if Jake throws out cactus, he's still fucked. But I agree with you on that. And Jake mentioned it earlier that somebody said it, we need an alien invasion or something like that to bring the world together. I don't think that's going to matter. And mm-hmm. the whole idea of there was more alien activity when we let off the atomic bomb. Right. So. I look at that as I walk around my property and there's an anthill, right? I don't fucking pay no attention to it. Now, if this, all of a sudden there was smoke coming from it, I'm going to go investigate. So yeah. I think that some, they're like, oh, these motherfucking primates learned how to blow it up. We need to make sure they don't blow up the whole thing. Yeah. You know, I don't well, know. See, That's- see, here's my deal. Like I had a Joe Biden moment the other day. I had a Mitch McConnell Shit your pants. moment the other day. Shit your pants. Close. I was close. Um, I, I sat there and I, I had a whole bunch of tasks that I was trying to do. And I had in my mind the order that I was going to do those. And while I was in the middle of trying to get those done, my boss comes over and throws another pile of shit on my desk for me to get done. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this pile of shit and that pile of shit. And at the same time, I get a chat that's sent sent to my computer that says, oh, here's this pile of shit that you have to get. And I'm like, okay, fuck, I've got to get this pile of shit and that pile of shit and this new pile of shit done. Right. Well, at the same time, I get a phone call that says, hey, this has to be done. All of this happens within like a three minute span. And I sat there and I look like Mitch McConnell and I'm just like, holy fucking shit. I'm about to stroke out. Right. My thought process is here, boys, that as it comes into society, they're always going to throw more shit into us to get us distracted. They're always going to try to try to put the most provocative thing out there that's going to impact people that people think is, is the most defining moment ever. And it's really not none of that fucking shit matters. What what matters is, is that, you know, when it comes into the government, at least um, it's absolutely corrupt. You can't tell me otherwise. There's no way that you go in as a poor, broke, whatever gender you want to identify as and you come out as a millionaire. Um, On the flip side, same thing with Hollywood. If you make it in Hollywood, I feel like you have to suck some dicks and the dicks that you have to suck are probably not the ones that you want in your mouth. 
And that, that being the case, you just made a deal with the devil and that's how you get some of the success. Not for everybody. I don't want to do a blanket thing for everybody. I mean, people, some people are self-made, but I feel like we live in a society right now where you have to grease the skids, where you have to pay the piper, where you have to, you have to charge a toll and you have to cough it up. And that's where we're at in society. So as it comes into some of these conspiracy theories, like I have fun talking about this because does it matter if they're aliens or not? Does it matter if there are dinosaurs or not? Probably not. Does it matter that we're in a war with Ukraine and do we know where that money's going? To me, it does, but that's all. Yeah, I'm one person, right? So it, we, we just live in a fuck society right now. And maybe one day, maybe one day, some alien will come in and they'll find, you know, a book that somebody wrote. And this is the, this is the inevitable book that they're going to live by. And they're going to hear about this guy named Walt from the B-Raw podcast where he's talking about sexy little midgets on a stage. And they're going to be like, that, that's what heaven's like. That is what heaven is like. I think people. I think there's a lot of people would pay some money to see that on an OnlyFans. I, I people throw, already I are. <laughs> people are paying for farts. I know, Walt. right? People are buying farts in a jar. Do you people see that? Disgusting. I saw that, and I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" There's so much stuff that people do that is disgusting. I it just, <clears throat> I, I will say this: when my brother had Messenger B word, I am so happy he's gone because yeah, the stuff he would send us. <laughs> I'd be like, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know people did that. I don't know if people want to do that. I don't, think, I don't even know the people that that are probably yelling out cactus while that's happening to them and nobody's listening to them. They should have used Tonka truck. I mean, fuck, dude. There's so much stuff out there like that just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not totally disgusted about humans because, you know, I, I can get it. I can get it, but I'm never going to go down that, that path, I guess. Well, nobody's going to convince me that we're the smartest people out there. Like at all, ever. Like I think that there are more uh, animals that are smarter when it comes into being just just making wow. decisions, being alive, than humans are. Um, at least animals, when they eat ass, they don't even you know like it just happens, right? Like we have to ask for consent. We have to like stop in the middle and be like, "Are you okay with this?" And then when we're done, we have to apologize. Like sometimes some somebody just might want their ass ate yeah. and you know you just pick out some fucking lice out of their hair and you're you're good to go you eat the lice and next thing you know you're you're on a better path but you know, here we are boys here we are dude have you guys ever heard the skit from bill burr about the getting a bad reading in court yeah that's i fun. love bill burr. yeah, bill yeah. burr's amazing that's not what she said she said no no stop no no that's not what she said <laughs> I've been Next there, dude. You know, been pound there. me too, man. Yeah, yeah. Pound me too. Yep, yep. Don't stop, cactus, cactus, cactus. <laughs> so, Walt, uh, let's let's circle this back. Uh, revisit uh, B Raw podcast. What do you have going on? What do you have coming up? What are some things that we can look for on your podcast? When do you air? All that sort of stuff. So, um, again, B Raw Podcast dot com. All one word for Jake. That's B E R A W. P O D C A S T. Thank you. I, I still am going to pick out the Black Real Women <laughs> I'm, I'm, podcast I'm too, not, just in case. I'm but. not mad at you for that. I can't judge you for that. And then uh, that's everything I have going on. The blogs have been a lot of fun doing that. Um, I just put up some new merch and I record, I put out one an episode a week. One week it'll be 60 to 90 minutes. A guest like B Word here was on there. Jake would love to have you so we can set that up. And then um, opposite weeks, I do B-Raw Bites. And the way I advertise that, it's just me and the microphone, no notes and shit I think you need to hear. And uh, I have a lot of fun with those. And they're about 10, 15 minutes long. The reason I call it, and I, I'm working out the wording in the script about the project and B-Raw being an adjective. Raw is, if you look up the definition, it's you know it's simple, powerful, real. And those are stories, live your life raw, you know, do what you need to do, be powerful about it, be simple about it. And when I say simple, it's not easy, you know, but don't complicate it by adding drama. You know, who cares what fucking Susan in accounting needs to talk about? I don't fuck care about that. Does that affect my life? Nope. Does what, you know, some people in Washington do to affect my life? If Big Bigfoot is up there hanging out with Jake Nobody's going to fuck and Jake wants to talk about it. Nobody's going to believe it anyway. So what the hell difference does it make? So that's why I like the raw part of it. And, and they can be positive as well. I mean, raw is just not negative and nasty and, 
Because if you think of Raw, you know, you think of, Raw Dog. Yeah, you think That's of what that. I think of. Isn't no it Raw problem. Dog or Monday Night? Yeah, yeah you think. You, yeah, yeah, you think of that stuff. But it's it's people that have fucked their life up and and brought it back around, and then people that are just doing great things. But even the raw stuff of the single mom that goes to work every day and has two kids and works a job in half and and you know makes it happen that way. You know, I don't think we give those types of people enough credit. So I like to talk about everything and anybody, everything and anything with anybody. So uh, I got some guys coming up. Uh, one lady is a, a stand-up comedian in Las Vegas. She's making a go at that. That's her dream. Another one, a guy out west in Cal- uh, California. He's an underground electrician for the city. And he, he had an arc explosion right in front of his face, spent six months recovering. I mean, it just wow, wiped shit. him out. Now he's a fitness expert, and the dude's just crazy ripped. It's like, holy shit, dude. Uh, you know, coming back from that, and the lady following her dreams, the guy, the Casino King that's uh, that's aired now, he, he got rid of a very lucrative job in the sports industry, and uh, now he plays poker full time. So it's it's a lot of fun to hear that stuff, and that's what I like to hear, man. And I like to get up here and laugh and holler at people too, as well. That's a lot of fun, guys. So I appreciate you having me on. No, thank you. Oh, absolutely, man. I, I have a blast with you. You know that. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna connect here again at the beginning of the month, and and uh, go from there. And and like I said, uh, Jake, uh, Jake could be a good guest for you. Hopefully, you guys can connect outside of this. But uh, we we it's our privilege to host you, man. We had a, we had a blast with you on and. With that, Jake, as you're doing little kissy faces to yourself, I have no clue what that's about. I don't know if you're sucking the New York Fashion aliens. Weeks. Oh, fucking we New go. York Fashion hey, Week. Hey, here's the thing that I that I learned a long time ago about fashion. Well, one, it's the second biggest pollution pollution part of pollution in the world. You know that polluter, yeah, polluter. And then uh, women's clothes purposely don't have pockets in them. So that way, you have to buy a purse. Yep, to drive the purse industry. You see that? I always knew that the buttons were on opposite sides so you can unbutton each other's clothes. Yep. I don't know if you guys knew that. No, yep, I didn't I know that. that. No, yeah, I usually yep. start at the yep. top and just Hulk Hogan it. I just rip. Yeah. 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 Hello, brother. We'll do that when you're doing the voice next time. Hello, brother. I'm Hello. In here. Yeah, let me in here just for a second, boys. We can take care of this shit. Yeah, boys, let's get after it. Well, if you really want to be romantic, you just you just serenade her with I am a real American. You just button after button, you just get that shit down. Oh, yes. Her, uh, I think she'll like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Why wouldn't she? That's See, that's, 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 hmm. that's that's the question there. Well, Walt, thanks again for coming on, man. And with that, Jake, what do you got for me? Thanks for all the dirty talk and come back and get sanitized. <laughs>